Welcome everyone to the um, City Council informational uh, meeting of uh, November 15th, 2016. Uh, welcome to everyone here in the audience and also to those watching us on whatever means they have uh, to watch us. Um, Mr. Kiley, are you ready for the I, UDC I meeting? I am ready. Or do I Thank need to stretch it longer? <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, uh, the UDC did meet uh, at the CCOG uh, boardroom on November 10th at 4 o'clock. And uh, there was an election of officers. Uh, Steve Mentley is once again the chair of the UDC, so it's good to keep Steve around. Um, then uh, there we, we discussed also uh, member appointments to the Citizens Advisory Committee, which I had the privilege of serving on prior to uh, my stint here on the City Council. And uh, then the uh, Transportation Coordination uh, Committee appointments took place, and I will mention that Councillor Rolfing is a member on that particular committee. So congratulations if you didn't know that since you were absent at the yes. meeting. <laughs> I did not nominate you. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, right. uh, and, and then we went over a number of other items, the 2017-20 Transportation Improvement Program revisions, a couple of different revisions to the program, uh, and then the Transportation Improvement Program program administrative am amendments uh, as well too. Uh, and then some safety performance measures uh, related to the MAP 21 funds uh, were discussed and other business, uh, Sioux Falls Pavement Condition Index was presented to uh, the UDC. And as you recall, we had that very same presentation uh, a few months back. Uh, and IMS is the consultant that conducted the analysis. And if you recall, we had 80% good to excellent was the, the rating uh, of our city streets. Um, so uh, then the meeting adjourned shortly after that. So it was a good meeting. I would add that the, um, the pavement conditions uh, report is on the Sioux Falls website, I believe under public works, if you are interested in looking at. Uh, it is very interesting to pick out your street or pick out one you know is bad. Uh, or one that you know has just been done and see what, it's, uh, see what it shows. It's, uh, it's a really great um, asset that we have to use now. Okay, we'll move on to the uh, Summer Youth Bus Program update. Um, Mr. Chair. Jim David. No, yes, Councilor Erpenbach. Open discussion? Oh, yeah, that's right. I apologize. I keep forgetting that. Is there any open discussion? Yes, sir. If I might. Yes, Councilor Erpenbach. Thank you. I just wanted to... Um, I was in a meeting earlier today where we talked about um, those agencies that are available to help people in, in the community of Sioux Falls who are either suffering from hunger or homelessness. And uh, as you all know, Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week is this week. We'll have a proclamation at our <clears throat> 7 o'clock meeting tonight. But I did pick up um, the latest version of the Helping Hand Emergency Resource Guide. I always carry a couple in my purse. Um, I hand them out instead of, you know, um, cash in some situations and so this is the most recent version of it it includes all those helping agencies that are available in in the community and it's available then um, at the libraries and at the various organizations doctors offices those kinds of places but I will after the meeting pass them around to the group but just for um, just in terms of the public seeing them it's the helping hand emergency resource guide it is printed by Minnehaha County Human Services it's updated at least annually and the Helpline Center is the one that compiles all the information so that it's available for those folks who are really in the deepest needs in Sioux Falls. So again, I'll hand them out to the team, but uh, just wanted to again lift up Hunger and Homeless Awareness Week, which is this week. Okay, thank you very much. Any other? Yes, Councilor Kiley. Well, I think I should mention the, uh, the, the day trip that the two of us were able I had the privilege of taking yes. yesterday along with uh, Excel Energy. Uh, Jim Wilcox invited uh, Councillor Rolfing and myself, and there were other legislators and I believe members of their advisory board present, but we visited a uh, wind, wind farm or wind project, as they call them, along the Buffalo Ridge area of Minnesota. And then we traveled up just northeast of Marshall, Minnesota, and uh, had the chance to visit a 480-acre solar uh, energy site. And one of the things that stands out as being pretty remarkable and encouraging to me now is that XL Energy, uh, over 50% of their energy is produced carbon-free today. 
Carbon free, yes. Wow. And so I did not realize it was that high. And obviously all they do in the area of wind energy and um, solar energy, that helps to offset the fluctuating costs of natural gas and coal and the other fossil fuels that are, that are used to uh, produce energy. But it was, uh, it was a trip worth taking. Yes. And I think it's something that we as a council, I know that we've already faced one potential project earlier, uh, well, in the last two years anyway, dealing with a solar farm, a solar project. And unfortunately, as much as I would have liked to have voted for that particular project, there were aspects of it I don't think they were just quite ready in the location. But uh, I think we're going to probably see more of those in, in the future because they wish to bump that up from 50 percent carbon free up to, I think they said 63 percent. Something like that. By yeah. 2030. So pretty aggressive and it's good to see them taking that uh, aggressive approach. Thank you. So thank you, Jim. Yes, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, and we should mention that this is one of his last hurrahs as he's going to retire at the end of the year. So absolutely. Steve Colbeck Counselor. will be taking his place. Councilor Selbert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Had the honor of attending the Veterans Day uh, service at Lincoln on Friday. My daughter and I escorted her grandpa and my father-in-law, who was a Vietnam veteran. Uh, they had a full house at Lincoln. Councillor Kiley was there as well, as well as Councillor, um, I just went blank, Staley. But it was a great program, full house. I just really enjoy going to those programs. And again, a shout out to the veterans out there. It really seemed to have a really especially patriotic feel, seeing as we just had an election a couple days before as well. But I don't know, just really enjoyed it. So I wanted to give a shout out to the veterans there and say how much I enjoyed the program. You're the only one who hasn't said anything. And rarely does, I mean. <laughs> I think I saw her hand up earlier. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> we will move on to our uh, presentation then. Um, Jim David with our summer youth bus program update. Yeah. Good afternoon, Jim David, Legislative Operations Manager for the City Council. Since 2010, the Dog Days of Summer program had offered youth an opportunity to ride fixed route anytime during the summer for $25. In, 20, in 2015, the Council suspended the fee for one summer with the intent of promoting youth ridership. This past April, the City Council approved an ordinance continuing this pilot program for the summer of 2016. City Planning and Sioux Area Metro instituted a simplified process for the program requiring a, requiring a student ID or freedom pass in lieu of the dog tag that have been in use since 2010. The results of a more user-friendly program was an additional 2,000 plus youth riders in 2016 during the months of June, July, and August. Last year, there was a 200 rider increase from 2014. The significant increase in ridership can also be attributed to the communication efforts of the Sioux Falls School District to notify parents and students prior to the end of the school year. If we look at percentages, there was a 24% increase in 2016 compared to a 2% increase in 2015. If you look at the graphic that's broken out by month, you will see the greatest growth occurring during the months of June and July, which is probably a better apple to apple or year to year comparison since August 2015 reflects the early school start date. June saw a 29% increase and July almost kept pace with a 27% increase. So the question for the council is how to proceed with this pilot program. Should there be a third pilot program next summer, or should it be made permanent, or should the program be discontinued? And that's a question I'll leave in your hands. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Any question for Mr. David? Councilor Erbenbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and, and thank you for the report, Jim. That's, that's always really interesting. Um, my question is, does this, I mean, certainly we're seeing increases during the summer when it's free. Does, can we prove that this rolls over into the winter months, that do we get see increased 
you know, student ridership in the winter when they have to I pay. don't know if those are tracked by Sioux Area Metro. I know with this program, they had a clicker, and so they were able to click every single time a student uh, boarded a bus. Let me just look at Sam back here. It's on your other side, under, other shoulder. <laughs> you know, it's something that we can track. Um, the program at this, during the school year has changed, too. Right. Um, you know, we've suspended those school tripper routes, but in its place, what we've been doing is that we do accept the school transportation passes. And so we could track those to see how much we ridership we're getting with those. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, that would be probably the best way we could track that. Okay, so I'm would, not- Just one second, would you identify more. yourself so we've yes. got it? Sam Trebilcock, City Sioux Falls Planning. Okay. You are. Um, so one, I'm just not sure I understand what you mean by, because I know that the school district kind of replaced the tripper routes with, um, they're using School Bus Inc. to do some of that mm -hmm. in place of what the city did prior. What, what do you mean when you say that the city buses accept their transportation pass? One of the, one of the things that we worked on with the school district is they said that um, it would be difficult because uh, for them to be charged um, the, the school kids twice because the school kids are paying for the school bus ink to do the service. Basically, it's $30 a month. Um, so many of the kids are having to ride uh, Surrey Metro also to get the ride home. And so we said, we'll accept that school transportation pass in return, you know, for you doing the uh, school services as part of school, school gotcha. busing service. So. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Council Selbert. Thank you. What would the downside to this program be? Why would we consider discontinuing it? Any reason that comes to mind? Really, uh, you, you certainly are seeing a, a loss uh, income for the, uh, uh, the revenue that you would receive otherwise. That would be one disadvantage. Um, but beyond that, um, there probably wouldn't be anything significant. Any it's idea a, how a much? program as far as Surrey Metro has been concerned, it's, it's worked well. Um, uh, certainly it's not been an issue um, that's, in, that's caused a problem with capacity of the buses at, at this point. So um, it would really, it's just the lost revenue that you're seeing. Any idea, have you got a dollar figure in mind what that is? No, you'd really have to look at it uh, and, and do an estimate on it because it would, uh, it isn't the ridership based upon, you know, $1.50 because many of those kids probably would purchase a monthly pass. And so you kind of have to determine how many times are they riding a month and then do an estimate based on that. But we certainly could do that if you're interested in knowing that as we get closer to looking at uh, uh, an ordinance change or expanding the, the service. So. Okay. Councillor Kiley. Thank you. Councillor Selberg, were you finished? Just want it looked oh. like you had Yeah, a pretty much. No, I just think it's a terrific program. I was just oh. kind of wondering if I was missing what the downside might be. Okay. So. Thank you. And I think that was a wonderful question. And I, and I thank the councillor for asking it. And I'll, I'll come back to his question and, and some of your responses in a second. But 24% increase, that's a pretty significant increase. Yes. I, I think we'd all be happy if our investments were to bring that kind of a return. So job well done, uh, it's, uh, and, and everybody else that was, was involved. And, and I would expect, looking at the results here, we saw the most significant increases in June and July. Mm -hmm. And as you recall, we were off to kind of a late start the previous year, 2015. Right. And uh, this year I, I was hoping that we would see good results like this, or at least improved results. Uh, because we, we had uh, more time to work with um, as, as we went into the program. Then in August, it, it tapers off, but I think that tapers off because of the start of school during that particular month as well, too. Now, the, and I do agree that if there is a downside, the potential loss revenue. However, it, it's hard to determine how much revenue is lost because how many of these new riders would have been attracted without the program? Just because we saw a 24% increase with the program doesn't mean we would have seen the same increase without it. And so I don't know that we can necessarily factor that as lost revenue, but rather um, maybe it will equate to future ridership by equating 
individuals at a young, uh, um, getting them acquainted with uh, the bus system and the transportation system at a, at a young age so that uh, they're more likely to use it because I think that's one of the bigger factors that you've referred to previously as, uh, as a drawback with the transportation system and why people don't use it is they're just not familiar with it, lack of familiarity, as well as inconveniences, other inconveniences. But getting to my question, I'm sorry that it took so long to get to a question, what, what other improvements do you think we could make? Because I'm thinking, like Councillor Selberg is, that I think it's a great program and we should continue to move forward with it. But I'm interested, what else can we do to make this even better? To maybe see another 24% per percent increase next year? Well, I guess I would recommend a couple of things, and some of those things we've talked about, you know, as part of the transit development plan. But um, one of the things that we can do right offhand is just work with the school district more and trying to get the word out about the program. We already made some improvements uh, this past year. They were able to get, get the word out, and I think that did help in, in, in portion why we saw some of the increase. Um, some, some of the other things we need to look at is what you were talking about, is making improvements to the system in general so that we can um, access, uh, have access to some of the other kids in some of the other school districts like Harrisburg and Brandon. Um, whether or not you're providing service to the southeast part of the city might help that a little bit. Um, and also to really improve the service to, um, as we talked about as part of the transit development plan, to increase some of those corridor routes. Um, so people, it's more understandable for them. People are more apt to use them, especially kids that are able to get around a little bit more easily. Um, some of these routes that we have right now, um, you know, it's, it's quicker to walk in some cases because of how they loop around. And so to be able to provide and invest into that is certainly going to um, increase the ridership for everybody and especially for some of the kids. And, and once again, I'd like to congratulate you for your efforts and, and all the individuals with Sioux Area Metro that uh, made this a successful program. And note that Sam, I avoided the Sioux Area Metro acronym on this one. Councilor Selbert, or Urbanbach, I'm sorry. Well, I just wondered what our <laughs> next step was. Jeez. Just wondered what our next step was in terms of, you know, um, Jim puts out that, that last slide says, you know, what's the future? I guess I would like to see this council make it a permanent program. I mean, I, I think we've, we've proven that, that it's successful. We can't prove the long term positive on it yet, but we can prove that more kids are getting places in the summer. You know, and if you talk about lost revenue, compare it to the $25, because it was $25 for the whole summer, right? We, the lost revenue is about $220,000. If we're not charging 25 bucks for the dog tag, it would have been about $220,000 in 2014. So I don't, I just see it as a long-term investment. I guess that's, that's my personal opinion. I'd appreciate council taking this as a, as a permanent program. I would tend to agree with you, and Sam, I would remind you to promote this. Uh, we did allocate some additional funds for the, for Sam to uh, promote bus riding, and this would be a great place to spend some of it. I would uh, enter, yes, Councilor Erickson. I just have a couple questions, if you don't mind. Um, I'm just kind of taking a few, a few steps back. Um, I know as we talked about some of this, there was fear that there was going to be overuse for riders and people kind of going for joy rides um, and potential behavior issues. I'm curious if you can talk a little bit about that and did we see any behavior issues? Was there over riding or joy riding or whatever? Um, and then the other uh, question that I have, the third question would be um, if you track the reason for ride, were people going to the pool? Were they going to friends? Were they going to work and how that worked? First of all, we didn't see a significant behavior issue or people overriding, and that's in part what we did in the front end to make sure the rules were established that indicated that. So we just made sure that the, the bus drivers understood that, and that's something we do anyway with any rider. Um, your, your other question about, um, you know, is there, what was the other question? For the reason reason for yes. Um, it seemed like a fair number of kids were doing it and just talking with the drivers that they were going to the pools. We do know that a number of the kids are going to some of the 
school services for the immersion program. That is probably one of the biggest things. And they're doing that before and they're doing that this time. And so certainly that's very um, vital for them to be able to get to the immersion program that they have. Um, but we did hear about the pools also. Thank you, and I, I appreciate um, kind of just the dialogue with, with that because I was curious as far as, you know, what reason were we going to see, see this? And if we're helping those that need to get to services or helping those that, that need to get something to eat or to a job or to the pool or whatever it is, um, that means that they're staying busy and they're staying out of trouble. And I'm not saying because they're busy means they would be in trouble if they were at home, but it certainly is a nice distraction and keeping them healthy and keeping them active in the community as well. So um, I, I enjoy hearing that dialogue. So thank you for what you did for a council initiated program um, and facilitating that in a positive way and encouraging people to use that as well. I know when we first started this, we reached out to the school district and they were extremely excited to promote it within the school district as well. And so it was a great partnership between this council and the school district. Um, and, and they sent out a text message, an email and a phone call saying, here's an opportunity for you if you need it. It's certainly not for everyone, but it's an opportunity for you if you should need something like that. Um, so I'm appreciative of the school district for doing that as well. And of course, for the, the legwork done in advance to making sure that it's not an issue we have to solve the behavior. And it's a great testament to the kids that are receiving this benefit and their behavior of, of you know, because we are talking about minors and having them um, act appropriately is, is amazing. I mean, it's a good thing and we should expect nothing less than that, but it's a great benefit for them and our community. So thanks for your work. Sure, thank you. Thank you. I would entertain a, a motion um, by, go ahead. Don't need it. Thanks. Okay. I would uh, entertain a recommendation that we move this to the full council um, recommending that uh, we make this uh, plan a permanent, uh, permanent uh, part of our ordinance. Anybody uh, want to discuss I, that? Did you have something else to say? I would just, a, just a question, but I would be happy. And I think uh, Councillor Erpenbach was already going down that path in terms of recommending that we do that. So okay. um, I, I think we probably have the consensus of the yeah. council to do just that, I would but ask, I do have a, Quick question, could you remind us, Sam, what, what, what is the minimum age where they, they could ride without an adult? We said essentially it's middle school. Middle school. Where they cannot, that they don't ride with an adult. Yeah, so if they have that, yeah, 11, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now. that question actually came up when I was addressing a group of Cub Scouts once sure. we got them to all sit yeah. down on the floor. Right, <laughs> but, so uh, if, they, if they have a, a middle school pass, and most of the kids, I think, do by that point, Great. They can, you know, show the driver, and the driver will say, "Understand that." Then, same thing about. Thank you very much. Yep. Then, at this point, I would ask our legislative research or legislative and operations manager to uh, come up with uh, uh, an ordinance that would make this permanent. Yep. To be we'll presented. have a first and second reading in December for your consideration. So. Thank you. Ready to go. Okay. Council Chair, I'd like yes. to make a motion to move into executive session uh, discussing the qualifications, competence, performance, character, or fitness of any public officer or employee or prospective public officer or employee. The term employee does not include any independent contractor. This is according to South Dakota Codified Law 125-21. Second, Monk. We have a second. Um, could we have a, um, a roll call vote, please? Council members Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. With that in mind, I would ask uh, everyone to uh, clear the chambers, please.